Welcome to our latest video in our GCSE revision series and this video is on the topic of chemical reactions and energy. By the end of this video lesson you should have an improved understanding of the differences between endothermic and exothermic reactions and you should also be able to use bond energy data to calculate the overall energy change for a reaction and to identify whether it is exothermic or endothermic. Now just as in other videos in this series, we're going to focus on how to answer exam questions. So here's the first exam question we like to have a go at. So read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So now let's look at how to answer this first exam question. So the question says methanol can be made when methane reacts with oxygen and the energy level diagram for this reaction is shown below. So this is an energy profile diagram and it shows the energy that the molecules of reactants and products have during the course of a reaction. So the energy change A is the activation energy. That's the minimum amount of energy required for a reaction to start. So you get one mark for that. And then for part B, it's asking you to use the energy level diagram to explain how it shows that this reaction is exothermic. Well, it's exothermic because methanol, the product, has less energy than methane and oxygen, the reactants. So if you wrote down that the energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants, you get one mark. And the reason for this is that heat energy has been lost to the surroundings. So if you said that heat energy is lost, that would get you a second mark. So there's two marks for this, one for the idea that the energy of the products is lower than the energy of the reactants, and one for the idea that heat energy has been lost. Now when energy is lost to the surroundings, that would cause a rise in temperature. So exothermic reactions are reactions that cause a rise in temperature. Now in endothermic reactions, the products would have a higher energy than the reactants because heat would be taken in by the system from the surroundings. By the system, we mean the chemicals, the molecules. Now, in endothermic reactions, we would have a drop in temperature, so it would get colder. So here's our second practice question. So read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So now let's look at the second question. So the second question says, when hydrogen reacts with oxygen, the following chemical reaction takes place. And we have two hydrogen molecules here reacting with one oxygen molecule to form two water molecules. And the question has drawn out the molecules with all the bonds. Now, a table is shown here in the question which shows you the bond energies. It shows you the amount of energy needed to break each bond here and this is the same as the energy released when these bonds are formed. So when a hydrogen bond is broken it takes 436 kilojoules of energy and the same amount of energy is given out when the bond is formed. So the first part of this question is asking me to calculate the energy needed to break all the bonds in the reactants. So the reactants are what we start with so we have two hydrogen molecules and an oxygen molecule. So I have to break two hydrogen bonds, which is equal to two times 436 kilojoules. That comes to 872 kilojoules. And I have to break a oxygen double bond that's present in O2. And that is 496 kilojoules. So I'm going to add 872 kilojoules to 496 kilojoules and that will give me the energy needed to break all the bonds in the reactants. So if I add 872 kilojoules to 496 kilojoules I get a total energy to break all the bonds equal to 1,368 kilojoules. So if I have 1,368 kilojoules I get two marks. Now for part two, is asking you to calculate the energy released when the bonds in the products are formed. 
So I have two water molecules and each water molecule contains two OH bonds. So in total I have four OH bonds. Now all I have to do to work out the energy released is to do four times 464 kilojoules because that's the energy that's released when I form an OH bond and that comes to 1856 kilojoules. So if I have 1856 kilojoules here I get two marks. Now the last part of this question is asking me to use the answers to part one and two to explain why the relative overall energy change for the reaction is exothermic. So to work out the overall energy change, I do bond breaking energy minus bond forming energy. So 1,368 kilojoules minus 1,856 kilojoules. So 1,368 minus 1,856 gives me an energy change equal to minus 488 kilojoules. Now because it's minus, that means it's exothermic. It means energy has been released to the surroundings. Now the reason it's exothermic is because more energy is released on forming the bonds than was needed to break the bonds in the reactants. So more energy is released on forming the bonds in the products than was needed to break the bonds in the reactants. So if you said the reason it's exothermic is more energy is released on forming the bonds than was needed to break the bonds and you had minus 488, you get a mark here. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now have an improved understanding of the differences between endothermic and exothermic reactions. And you should also be able to use bond energy data to calculate the overall energy change for a reaction and to identify whether it is exothermic or endothermic. That concludes our video. Thank you for watching. This and other GCSE, AS and A-level chemistry videos can be found on our YouTube channel, Dr. O Chemistry.